If you want to support Black-owned and operated businesses in the Grand Strand area and beyond, check out the NetworkConnects.com for a complete list of establishments in our local area. Our network connects Black businesses to community for a wide range of services, products, organizations, and resources that are viable in the African-American community. You'll find a wide range of products and services that'll fit your needs, along with information about events and happenings around the local community. Check out the networkconnects.com. Connecting Black businesses to community. The networkconnects.com. Good evening and welcome to Educate Our Youth. My name is Janet Keith Thompson. I am the co-founder and CEO of the Mamie Keith and Aileen Bradley Educational Foundation, also known as Educate Our Youth. The mission of Educate Our Youth is to make college more accessible through education, mentoring, professional development, and any other means available to students by offering programs such as the SAT and ACT workshops to college campuses and assist with applying for financial aid, financial literacy, young entrepreneurship, and athletes and academics. Our guest this afternoon is Mr. Brandon Berg. He is the admission counselor for North Carolina Central University. Good evening, Brandon. How are you today? Doing very well. How about yourself? I'm hanging in there. It's been a nice day. Nice day. So let's talk about North Carolina Central. Can you give us a little history about NCCU? Yes, so North Carolina Central University was founded in 1910, I believe July 5th to be exact, um, by Dr. James E. Shepard. He was a pharmacist as well as a religious educator whose intent when he founded the university was to provide young women and men of color with uh, character and sound academic training for a real service to a nation. Okay, sounds good. And to... um. I, I think I was it Reverend Reverend Barber was uh, the minister of Barber was an alumni of North Carolina Central University. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. And, and Herman Boone from the movie Remember the Titans. He's an yes, alumni. yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, give us some information about the admission requirements. Um, how is it? How can you get? If I have a child that would like to go to NCCU, what would she need to do to get in? They would need a minimum of a 2.5 grade point average. Um, okay. They would need to complete the application and pay the application fee of $50. Um, we, as it stands right now for the fall 2021 term, we are waiving test scores, so those will not be required. And you need to make sure that you have your mandatory course requirements, um, which are that we look for four Englishes, four maths, and one of those being higher than algebra two, um, three units of science, and one of those serving as a lab science, so you're thinking biology or chemistry. Uh, two units of history, and one of those being U.S. and the other being world history, and lastly, two units of the same consecutive foreign language. So you're thinking like a Latin one, Latin two, German one, German two, so on and so forth. All right. So do you have bridge programs for a student that may not have a 2.5 GPA? Uh, we don't have bridge programs, but we do uh, accept transfer scholars. Um, so say if a student doesn't quite meet that GPA, um, in a normal year, we would look at a test score um, in terms of freshman um, applicants. So if you okay. have like a 2.3, but you come in, I think the test score that we look for, if you don't meet the 2.5, is a 1010 on the SAT and a 19 on the ACT. But oh. like I said, um, for this fall, that would not be admissible um, for those test scores. That makes sense. Yeah. Do, uh, do y'all accept fee waivers for admissions for the admission application? Yes, ma'am. We accept fee waivers from SAT, ACT, and NACAC, which is the National Admissions Counselor uh, website as well. Okay. What scholarships do you offer um, that can so, assist students attending? So we offer uh, various scholarships. We have our Chance or Merit scholarships. Um, they're pro pretty much broken down into three criteria based off your GPA. Uh, the scholarship deadline is May 1st, and the enrollment fee is due May 15th. Um, the first uh, the criteria is the Eagle in Flight. Uh, those for students who are met a GPA of a 3.3 uh, and above, they will be allowed $2,500 per academic year. And that's broken down between the fall and spring semester, of course. Uh, the next tier would be our Rising Eagle. And those are for students who earned at least a 3.5 GPA. Uh, they will be allowed $3,500 per academic year. And lastly, our Soaring Eagle um, uh, scholars 
who earn a three point seven five or higher, they'll be allowed seven thousand five hundred dollars for academic year. Um, so I mentioned we also have a university honors program. They do provide scholarship assistance. Um, they offer scholarships like the Goldwater uh, Truman Scholarship as well. Uh, so typically the students that uh, meet the criteria of the chance of merit scholarships, nine times out of 10 meet the criteria for the university honors program, they can qualify for more scholarships as well. And we okay. also have our Cheatham White, and that's, um, that's, that's the last scholarship here. It's our full ride scholarship. Um, we require that students have a 4.0 GPA, um, a permit U.S. citizen or resident. Um, this is strictly for our first year students. Um, we ask that you demonstrate strong service and leadership skills and show that you're involved at, um, outside uh, the classroom. And that's the best way to help your application stand out. And the deadline for that application is December 15th. Okay. Do you have tuition? Yes, ma'am. Do, do you charge, do you, on your school, um, charge out-of-state tuition? From, you know, say a student yes. from South Carolina have to pay out-of-state tuition? Yes, ma'am. We do charge out-of-state tuition. I believe the annual fee for our out-of-state students, um, let me... See, it's a little over twenty one thousand um, annually, okay. um, and I can double check on that. We can uh, circle back to that one as well. Okay, and the cost to attend if you're in state. The cost to attend is significantly cheaper. Uh, that's about um, eleven thousand. But like I said, I can uh, get more information okay. on that for you here. Um, okay. So let's talk about student aid, um, other than the scholarships, what are the aid, student aids that's available? <clears throat> In terms of scholarships, uh, they cover pretty much just your standard tuition uh, fees. Um, I know with our Cheatham White, that covers the housing, textbooks. Um, students who qualify for that also receive summer travel experience, and they get to keep okay. a MacBook laptop at the end of their four years here at NCCU. Um, okay. And to kind of double back there, um, the um, actual cost per semester for out-of-state students is a little over $17,000, and for in-state, okay. it's a little over 11000 Okay. So the students are given a, a, a MacBook at the at the freshman year? Correct. And they get okay. the duration of Okay. So how, um, <clears throat> excuse me, do you require um, auditions or essays as an entrance into your institution? We do not. Um, well, we'll say we will accept letters of recommendation, um, although okay. they're not required. Um, just to, like I said, show um, that you're involved outside the, the classroom and show that you have leadership skills as well, because we're pretty much a service based or uh, institution, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So what's 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 it like a first year student at um, North Carolina Central? In a normal year, um, there's tons of things to do. We have over 100 in clubs and organizations to help you get involved. We have a, a annual uh, 1040 breaks on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So um, pre-pandemic, pre we would invite all students out to the Greek Bowl, um, makes for a nice social hour, sometimes invite a DJ out, uh, things like that. Um, we have tons of eateries on campus, such as Starbucks, Pizza Hut, Subway. Um, we have a C store, which is the equivalent to like a gas station convenience store, um, almost in terms of like snack items and things like that in our student union. Okay, so um, how many <clears throat> do you have off campus housing for students and how is your housing set up um, like co-ed or based on gender or both? Uh, we, do have, we do have co -ed dorms. We have about 12 residential halls on campus. Um, we have one apartment style dorm on campus and I believe it is Eagle Landing. Um, so the three okay. residential styles are your traditional um, in which you will share a room with another student and share a bathroom at the end of the hall with the remaining students on that floor. Uh, we have our sweet style living, which is typically designated to our honor students and upperclassmen. Um, and in this uh, aspect, students will actually share a connecting bathroom um, within that suite. And lastly, the apartment style living, of course, will students will have their own individual room, share a kitchenette area, a bathroom, and a common living space as well. Um, now, all the residential halls on campus do come equipped with several amenities, such as access to free washer and dryer. Of course, you need to bring your own detergent. Um, yeah. We have Wi-Fi that's kind of circulate throughout the whole dormitory. We have study rooms, computer labs. Right now, they're operating at half capacity um, just uh, in light of COVID protocols. Tell me about your academic support for students. Okay. So we have a trio support services. So we do offer tutoring services here as well on campus. Those are absolutely free. Um, we also have speaking and writing studios on campus. So if students are looking to enhance uh, enhance their writing skills or looking to grow as a professional speaker, um, we have those put in place to um, assist them as well. 
And we also have student accessibility services that meets accommodations for students with special needs on campus. You just said trio support service, didn't you? Is that yes, what you said? Yeah, yes, because it, yeah, that the trio rang out because I work trio uh, in higher ed at OE Georgetown Tech and um, mm -hmm. as a counselor. And while um, employed there, we toured NCCU uh, with the trio students. So, and I had to walk up these enormous steps. I can't remember exactly where I was located on campus, but when I got to the top, I was tight. Yeah, we often uh, refer to our, our campus as the Sloping Hills and Vernon Green. So you got, got a little taste of the Sloping is. Hills there. Yeah, yeah, it's very healing. So tell me, um, is most classes of your classes taught by professors or teaching assistants? So we have teacher assistants, adjunct professors. We have uh, doctors, all types. The average class size here is about 23 per classroom. And the student okay. faculty ratio is about 16 to 1. Uh, so what that means for you students is that you will receive a at-home personalized learning experience. I often personally tell students that once you leave NCCU, you're going to leave with an extension of like a godmother or godfather in terms of the relationship and bond that you form with some of these professors here on campus. Um, from my personal experience being an HBCU alum, my academic advisor at my uh, previous institution um, actually wrote my letter of recommendation um, for the position I'm in now. So okay. we still keep in contact to this day. So we speak at least uh, twice a month. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, do y'all have um, um, abroad where the students can study abroad as well? Yes, the Office of International Affairs does host our study abroad program. Uh, students have traveled to 40 countries during the fall or summer semester, and they can choose the duration of their stay. Um, and that is between a semester, a full year, two to five weeks. Um, we also have a passport office on campus, so if you're interested in doing that, you can get your passport generated here. Some of the countries that our students have traveled to have been South Korea, Australia, Dominican Republic, Argentina, Spain, uh, and Morocco and Africa as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. How about apprenticeships? Do um, our seniors, you know, ask to get involved with apprenticeship? Or does the college um, have an agreement with, with companies in your area where students can do internships? So we have a career service center here that does allow students to actually search on their own for internships um, if okay. their professor doesn't assist them in placing them in one. Oh, okay, okay. So um, how about cars for freshmen? Are they allowed to have their own vehicle? I get that year? question a lot. Uh, yes, they are allowed to have their own vehicle. Uh, just keep in mind that they are typically designated to park in the parking deck, which is uh, located by the admission center on our campus. And it's typically right. a little further walk for um, our freshman students. Um, but the parking pass is about $325 for the academic year. Okay. So how about your your, your um, athletic department? So um, I'm not familiar with NCCU um, athletic department. So I mean, you have football, basketball. What, what um, sports do you have on campus? So we have 310 student athletes that compete in 13 Division One sports. We compete in the MEAC, which is the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Um, okay. The sports that we have for men and women are basketball, cross country, track and field, and tennis. Um, we also have band uh, cheerleading in our dance team as well. Um, and mm -hmm. our basketball team, we are um, greatly proud of. They are reigning three-time defending MEAC champs. And they also have a documentary on ESPN with uh, C uh, ESPN anchor Stephen A. Smith as well as NBA player Chris Paul, who are co-producing it called Why Not Us. Uh, so and if I you have ESPN Plus, I, I definitely have, uh, encourage you to check that out. I want to see that. Um, I was watching Stephen A. Smith, I think, on, on The View, and he mentioned that. So, um, yeah, I'll be watching that soon. So how about your, your well, almost campuses have um, sororities and fraternities. Tell us about the, in which I'm sure they're the same on every campus, but give us a little bit about the ones on your campus. The Divine Nine. So we, we are home to all Divine Nine fraternities and sororities on the National Panhellenic Council. Uh, and we also have a sorority, um, Latino sorority, Lambda Pi Chi, um, as well on campus. Um, so all of our organizations are currently on the yard. Um, and was there any specific insight to that or? <laughs> no, I just like let, 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 let the kids know that there there is Divine Nines on probably every campus. Every school that I've interviewed, you know, they've all had um, all 
everybody was functioning. There was nobody that was thrown off campus or, you know, the charter was removed with things of that nature. So I always ask that question. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, all of our organizations are on campus. They are very scholarship based and uh, service oriented. Um, so I would advise any student that's interested in any of those organizations, do your research before and just keep an eye out once you get to campus for any type of um, events as well. Okay. Do you, um, did you still need to declare a major that first year or, or the sophomore year? Uh, they have to declare by their sophomore year. Um, we do have freshmen do come in that are undeclared in terms of majors. Um, but typically I tell students that you're going to change your major at least once before you graduate um uh, an institution so to speak um but yeah. they can officially declare their major during the time of their orientation while speaking with their academic advisor what percentage of students graduate in a four-year time span uh 44 percent in a four-year span okay okay and do y'all are do y'all have any type of group with any technical colleges in your area um sometimes the technical colleges have they, they sort of work together with with students coming out of tech and transferring into um, your university? Yes, so we do have our transfer scholar agreement, excuse me, okay. for any student that's completed a uh, two-year associate in arts, associate in science, or associate in applied science degree from any of the 54 community colleges in the state of North Carolina, we do offer transfer scholars. So the GPA ranges anywhere between 2.75 and a 4.0. And they'll be allowed two thousand to three thousand dollars per academic year, and that's split between the fall and spring semester. Okay. Any off-campus housing, or everybody just on campus? Oh, we do have off-campus housing, but uh, they're typically not associated with the school. If that makes sense. I mean, we have student housing in terms of apartments, but they're not directly associated with the school. Okay. Okay. But that comes out their tuition, or that's separate money. I mean, to live off oh, that's, campus, that's separate. That's separate. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, then I was wondering what type of um <clears throat> does it, your classroom is it lecture based or um usually um I just have to sit in lecture rooms which I think I'm pretty much like an open class discussion or more lecture based how or is it mixed on your campus? It's mixed. Uh, right now we have students taking hybrid courses, so we have some that are strictly online that are lecture based. Um, some that are in person that are discussion based and vice versa. What are your plans with hybrid? You think you're going to be um, brick and mortar next fall or are you going to continue um, with your hybrid classes next fall? You have don't know. I think we're still going to uh, play it by ear and uh, just cater to the students' request. Um, I know um, with the pandemic and everything, we've had students who decided at the last minute they weren't coming or that they wanted to take online courses and things of that nature as well. Um, so we're just going to play it by ear at this time. Has the pandemic had, had a big effect on college life? Uh, yes, it has. Um, one of the sports teams that we have here at NCC, we actually had to kind of close the door on that program due to little funding. Um, I know with the pandemic, we've kind of been in a closed off space in terms of all of our buildings on campus are appointment based only. Um, okay. So all the buildings are locked. Um, classes are being held at half staff, half capacity um, and things of that nature as well. So we've had a very, uh, compared to our neighboring schools, we've had very little COVID cases um, with the standard on campus mandate, as well as the pre screening that we have to take coming in uh, to work or coming to campus. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So you know, your environment is, is pretty safe. Get to um to work and I guess you have you do have some students on campus, correct? Correct, yes, ma'am. Is there anything else I need to know about North Carolina Central that we haven't discussed? Uh, yes, I yes, I do have a video us? I can show um, or share with you guys. Um, it's okay. from homecoming 2019 pre-pandemic. Uh, and before I do that, I do have three words I, that I can use to describe North Carolina Central University. Um, mm -hmm. and that's first and foremost, family. Uh, service and opportunity. Um, here at NCCU, um, when I'm, the video I'm about to show you, um, we have a very family-like atmosphere and this uh, campus has a very good aesthetic feel to it. In terms of service, uh, all students are required to complete 120 hours of volunteer service prior to graduation. So it's about 15 hours per semester. And we have 100 okay. clubs and organizations on campus to help them earn those hours prior to graduation. And lastly, opportunity. Durham is a great job market. Um, we have a strong alumni base in the area. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that goes kind of go hand in hand with our career center as well. Our alumni do look out for the most recent alums as well. 
Um, but I will share my screen and um, play this video here of Homecoming from 2019. Okay. All right. That's nice. But one thing I hope will never change, and that's um, HBCUs, the sports, the homecomings, the bands. I mean, it is really wonderful seeing young students um, participate in those things, you know. Let me ask you, one thing we didn't cover before we go was your programs um, that you offer at NCU, NCCU. That, do you have a, um, is there a, a law you don't have a law department, do you? Uh, yes, law we school. have a law school, but that's more so uh, graduate side on the graduate side of things. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, but students that want to take up law, I would encourage them into majoring in political science. I know they do offer a concentration in pre-law, criminal justice. We have a really good, a highly accredited criminal justice program here at NCCU as well. Okay, okay. And along with your psychology, English, math, all of that. Correct. In psychology, they have a ABM program that does allow students to obtain their bachelor's and their master's in a matter of three years to accelerate okay. programming. Um, they offer two concentrations in general and clinical psychology as well. What about nursing? Uh, yes, we have a nursing program. They offer students four ways to obtain their BSN. We have our traditional program, an accelerated program, um, a program for registered nurses and veterans. And we also have a clinical resource skill lab training center in our Eagle General Hospital. Uh, typically, oh. um, freshmen coming in majoring in pre-nursing will actually have to take um, two years of just educational courses and then have to apply to the nursing school, a prerequisite oh, okay. course. Oh, okay. And I'm pretty sure you have the educational department if you want to go into teaching or physical sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. it sounds great. Sounds great. I mean, it's a beautiful campus. Um, I did have the pleasure of touring a campus with the trio of students. And um, I appreciate you coming on. If anyone wants to um, contact Mr. Brandon Bird, you can by sending up to our email admissions at nccu.edu. His phone and number I'll, I'll is put nine. in here as well. Okay. And I'll put our social media handles in here for the students as well. All right. And what is that? Can you give it to us? Yes, it's uh, on Instagram. It's nccu underscore admissions. Um, we, I'm also providing the NCCU University Honors Program account as well as our NCCU Class of 2025 account as well. Okay. Um, Alrighty so then. For you. Okay. And folks, you can also reach out to us on educateouryouth.info. That's our website. You can reach us on um, YouTube at the, the symbol at Educate our youth info. Okay. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email at mkabeb001 at gmail.com. Brandon, it's been nice having you this afternoon. Likewise, the pleasure has been all mine. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for sharing the information about North Carolina State Central. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.